breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. The layers and other precautions are in place. Should an Ebola patient ever come to GHS, we'll show you how they're preparing. House locked down today after two people were shot, and North Carolina authorities are still looking for a shooter. But first tonight, major shakeup in the race for governor of South Carolina. With just a week to go before Election Day, Tom Irvin has dropped out of the race, and he's now supporting the Democrat, Vincent Shaheen. WYFF News 4's Nigel Robertson broke the story online and on social media first. He joins us now live where Tom Irvin made today's big announcement. Nigel. Yeah, yeah Carol and Michael, Tom Irvin says he wanted to run to be governor of South Carolina because he wanted to bring change to Columbia, change to the governor's office. But after seeing himself down in the polls each and every time, he decided he had to do something. As a Republican who was running as a petition candidate, he said he wanted to put the state first and support who he thinks. I can tell you that I'm confident that he will listen. Uh, he will address these issues that we've been struggling with along the campaign trail. I've heard his responses during the debate, and, and I believe that uh, he will be a leader in the areas that I've talked about. That's ethics, DSS, and finally, of course, domestic violence. I say there's only one candidate left who's proven that they can be honest, that they have the integrity to represent South Carolina in the governor's office, and we cannot afford four more years of Nikki Haley. Both men say they will use this election to, or this last week before the election, to bring change and to get voters to support Shaheen. But will that be enough? When you look at the. Take a look at the numbers and see how they play out in this particular race. The latest Winthrop polls show Governor Nikki Haley 10 points ahead of Shaheen among likely voters with 44%. Tom Irvin had just 4%. That was Nigel Robertson reporting. Now to the topic of Ebola. Today, upstate first responders met with the Department of Health and Environmental Control. Health officials want to make sure local agencies are on the same page, so to speak, when it comes to handling a potential Ebola patient. And those who would have the first contact with such a patient would likely be the 911 dispatchers. WIFF News Force Mandy Gaither is live and local at the dispatch center in Anderson County for us tonight. Mandy, what are the dispatchers told to do when it comes to a potential Ebola patient? Well, Michael, just like in any emergency, they're told to ask a lot of questions. When it comes to Ebola, if a caller has flu-like symptoms of fever, then dispatchers here ask whether the person has been traveling and whether there may have been contact with an Ebola-infected person. Now, EMS is notified so that then they can be prepared when responding to a home. We can put on proper protective equipment. We can uh, exercise universal precautions, which we've done for years upon years. Uh, masks, gown, gloves, uh, protective glasses, whatever is necessary. DHEC will also be notified, and the state will then provide guidance on what the county should do. Anderson County officials say this is all a base plan, and they're still working on it as new information comes down from the CDC and DHEC every day. Mandy Gaither, WYFF News 4, live in Anderson County. Mandy, extra layers of clothing and special respirators are just a couple of protective measures in place at the Greenville Health System. WYFF News 4's Myra Ruiz is live and local in Greenville with more. Myra. Doctors and nurses say they're really just trying to protect everyone and revisiting policies to ensure no one gets left out. What you're looking at is similar to what you'd see in an isolated room where health care workers would care for an Ebola patient. The Greenville Health System has at least 200 doctors, nurses, and respiratory therapists ready to handle this type of case. I mean, we train for these types of things from our very basic nursing courses on how to protect ourselves and, and, and how to protect our patients. From, from any type of organism. Nurses at the GHS Simulation Center showed us just part of what goes into protecting themselves and others from the virus. I think it's important for the community to see that Greenville Health System and our hospital system is preparing for this, hoping we don't ever have to use it, but needing to be prepared. This is going to be an ongoing process and we'll continue to educate our staff uh, and improve as more information becomes available. Our highest priority is the safety of our patients, our visitors, and our employees. GHS can handle up to three patients with Ebola at once. Identifying a potential case starts with asking questions about travel and exposure when a patient shows up with possible symptoms. From there, it's a designated route to specific areas in the hospital equipped to handle someone with the virus. 
As an additional precaution, the unit is uh, monitored 24-7, and there is controlled access appropriately placed. But doctors say the public's greatest health threat around here is not Ebola, but instead the flu. You get your flu shot, get your flu shot early, um, and that's how, uh, that's how most lives will be, will be spared during this season. And doctors emphasize that our chances of experiencing an Ebola outbreak similar to Africa's is very unlikely due to our very different ways of life. Myra Ruiz, WYFF News 4, live in Greenville. All right, Myra, thank you. Take a look here. The camera that you're seeing this through is courtesy of Wofford College and EarthCan. This is a live look at the Pacula River. Uh, students are using this to study river conditions. And, John, uh, the river may uh, be a little higher to come tomorrow, right? Uh, showers expected uh, our way? Yeah, but no flooding concerns or anything like that, Michael and Carol. Well, in fact, most of the showers will be fairly light, I think, during the day tomorrow. Slight chance of a thunder shower, uh, but not expecting, not expecting anything strong or severe. And most likely, it'll be just rain showers. And they'll be very scattered in nature with the best chance of showers tomorrow in the mountainous areas, not the upstate. All right, so you can see on the radar, things are nice and quiet now. Temperatures are nice and warm across the area. Your headlines, so scattered showers and cooler weather on the way for tomorrow. Cooler weather in the mountains. Cooler weather across all the entire viewing area starting tomorrow night. And then it gets colder as we head toward Halloween and into the weekend. North Carolina mountains, especially the northern mountains of North Carolina and the closer you get to the Tennessee line, Friday night and Saturday, Rain and snow showers scattered around. So we're going from fall straight into winter this weekend. And by the way, this weekend also before going to bed Saturday night, guess what? Yeah, daylight saving time ends. We lose an hour. So make sure you turn your clocks back one hour before going to bed Saturday night.